John Workenden here from Michael's Camera. There's been some very interesting announcements in the world of tilt shift lenses this week from Canon. So I thought we would do a live broadcast here and give you a little introduction to tilt shift lenses and do some live samples with them and tell you a little bit about what Canon has got on offer. So sitting in front of me here and we're in the Canon shop within Michael's camera. So if you want to come in and watch me broadcast live here on Facebook, you're more than welcome. If you've got questions for me, put them in the Facebook comments and let's cut to the chase and talk a little bit about tilt shift lenses. So in the current Canon line, there are four tilt shift lenses. Starting with the ultra wide 17 mil here, which I'm just going to pop the lens hood off here because it's got a beautiful front element on it here. Uh, this is a very fancy lens and sort of one of your go to for ultra wide angle architectural photography. And of course, historically, that's where tilt shift lenses have been used, but there's so much more and that's what I want to talk about. So that's the 17 mil that was introduced into the line, I think about seven or six years ago. So it's a current generation. Then I have on my 5D Mark IV, the 24 mil, that's also an L series lens. And you can tell they're L series because they've got the red ring around the front. Again, this was released a little bit after the 17. So it's been in line for, I think it's like six years or so. Also another, you know, classic go-to lens for the architectural photographer. Pretty good for interiors as well. But again, there's more to deal with. These, with there's a lot. <laughs> tilt shift lenses are a crazy beast and that's why I want to get you excited about it. Now, in the current line, and these are about to be replaced with the new announcements, there is the 45 mil. This was not an L series lens and the 90 mil, again, was not an L series lens. So Canon has decided to update the line and these two lenses will be replaced. The 45 will be replaced with a new 50 mil. So it'll be a little longer, really you're splitting hairs there, but it will be an L series and it will be a macro tilt shift lens. So they've basically changed the line around so that these new lenses can focus a little bit closer. That's really interesting because macro photography and tilt shift are a match made in heaven. So the 90 mil will be updated. Again, the new 50 and the new 90 that replaces it, they are L series lenses. They've got fabulous new lens coatings on them. It will also be a macro. It will be F 2.8, the 50 is a 2.8. And then the newest one in the line is the new 135 mil F 4. Again, it's a macro version. So nobody's had a tilt shift lens at that focal length. So that's going to be very interesting. It'll be a real popular lens, this 135 for product photographers and possibly for portrait photographers. So I'm pretty excited about it. Now, unfortunately they were just announced this week. So we're not going to be seeing them in the store until probably November. As soon as we get them, I'll be the first to tell you about it. And I'll obviously be playing with them. We have committed at Michaels to putting all the tilt shift lenses into our higher department. So if you've ever wondered about tilt shift lenses and you'd like to have a little play without the risk of ownership, hire one, hire it for a day, hire it for the weekend. And if you love it as much as I do, you might want to buy one. And so remember, if you choose to purchase a lens after you've hired at Michaels within 30 days, 50% of your hire fee will go towards the purchase of the lens. So let's get the live feed from our 5D Mark IV and feed it into the video here. I've got, I've got to take a look at what I'm shooting here. Probably just looking at nothingness. I'm going to put it on the tripod over here and I'm going to use the lenses I've got on the table as my sample. So let me just carefully put this on the tripod. Okay. Now let's bring in, so this is the 24 mil. Let's bring in some subjects and what I want to do, ooh, playing tops here. I want to have a little bit of fun looking down this line of lenses and I want to see the labels on them. So I want to go like so. And this is where it gets really interesting because there's two aspects of a tilt shift lens. There is tilt and there is shift. Shift is historically where these things were used. Shift enables us and I'm going to demonstrate it right now. Let me get this. Oh, oh, just, okay. Things are just causing me a little bit of problems here. Hopefully, do we have a signal from the camera? We still okay on the signal from the camera? Give me a thumbs up if we're good. Oh, I got a thumbs down over there. Let's just make sure we've got that coming in. Okay. So I might get Matt to come around here. I've got my safety net. So what we'll do is I'll get you. You got enough wire there, Matt? Okay. So we'll see if we're looking at the back of the camera. So. 
we are in, I'm going to put it in stills mode here so that we'll get it up and I'll turn live view on. There we go. Okay, so here's our picture with our lenses. Now what I want to do is demonstrate what shift is all about. So the camera's on a tripod, the lenses are on the table here, they are not moving, the camera's not moving, and now I am shifting the lens down. So you see that the frame is going up. This is very interesting. This enables me to take a picture of a building and correct for distortion. So when you take a picture of a building, sometimes when you look up, all of the verticals of the building get like a pyramid and they go in like this. Or if you look down, they diverge. With the tilt shift lenses shift mode, we can deal with that. So let me, I'm gonna raise my tripod up a little wee bit and we're gonna take a look at what we've got out here. So let's, it's a manual focus lens. That's another thing one has to remember with tilt shifts. Let's get ourselves, we got our Make sure that we've got no tilt. Let's get focused here. There we are, we're in focus. Now, what I wanna do is I want to zero the shift. So I'm gonna put up into the zero mode and just give it a little bit of a lock here. And now I'm going to aim the camera up and I wanna show you how verticals change. Notice how to see the top of the roof here, we've got the lines are starting to bend in a little wee bit. So now if we level the camera again, and I'll just go over here. I might bring my exposure down just a little wee bit. We're just a little overexposed there. There we go. Now I'm going to tilt up. So the camera is level. So I'm not going to tilt. I'm going to shift. Now we're looking up, but all the wall is still vertical. And we can go up quite a ways, almost a complete frame. So as you can see that I've got Shannon over here on the camera right in front of me. She's waving. And she's at the bottom of the frame. Now if we shift all the way down, we can see we can bring Shannon almost to the top of the frame. So this has shown us a very interesting feature of it. Obviously, the tilt shift lens is producing such a huge projection on the sensor. We call it like the large circle of light. I'm kind of like, it's like I'm moving the sensor around behind the projector. And so I've just basically proven that we can shoot a whole frame above and a whole frame below. Now these two frames would stitch together. So I've basically taken a horizontal view of the store here, and I could put the lower frame together with the upper frame, and this is a 30 megapixel camera. I can get almost a 60 mega megapixel picture just by doing two frames. Or if all I really wanted to do was make sure that I had a nice level picture that's aimed low, for example, what I've got right now, which I'm showing the lenses that are in front of me, as well as a little bit of you know the shop floor and whatever, but again, everything's nice and level. Yes, you can correct this stuff in software. Lightroom's got some one button functions to correct it, but it's destructive. If you wanna do it right, you wanna do it in camera. And the shift function on the tilt shift lens is the appropriate tool for that. So now let's talk about the next feature of these lenses, which is the tilt. So I'm gonna bring the tripod down a little bit now and I'll get Matt to come behind me. I'm gonna zero the shift i'm going to do that now this is kind of cool what i want to do is i want to bend the focal plane down this line of lenses and by shifting the lens is exactly how i do that but as you see i've got the tilt going up and down right now but there's a solution for that what i can do is i can hit the rotator here and now i'm rotating the tilt axis independent of the shift axis and I've got a release over on this side. If you, I don't know if you can sort of show it here. I'll, I'll bring it through. It's kind of pointed in here. If I stand out of the way, maybe Matt can show us for us. There's two little metal levers here. One is the rotation axes between shift and tilt, and the other is the rotation axes of the complete lens. So now I'm going to rotate the whole thing back. So now I have the shift axes left and right. Okay, so now as you can see on the, on the scale over here, I'll just unlock it so it moves a bit smoother. So now I'm shifting across the sensor and versus up and down. And again, I've got my tilt again on the horizontal axes. So this is very powerful. I can independently rotate how I'm shifting and how I'm tilting. And that is what's unique to the L series tilt shifts. And we did not have that feature on the old 90 and on the old 45. 
But on these new versions, the 135 that's coming, the 50 that's coming, and the 90 that's coming, they will all operate exactly like this. And this is a much needed feature. People have wanted this for years, and it's finally coming. If you do happen to pick up one of these copies used at a very good deal, and we'll probably have a few coming into the store here, um, it is possible to undo these four screws here and rotate the tilt and shift mechanisms so that they are on the same axes, but they are nowhere near as flexible as the L-series ones. So this is a really big upgrade and it's exciting that Canon's do it. We've been waiting for years for these new lenses to come out and we know they're gonna be optically superb and functionally superb. So let's get ourselves back to where I wanted to be. I'm gonna null out my shift and put that into the axes. Now I've got my tilt on the vertical axis, so I'm tilting across this axis here. So I'm gonna bring my camera down a little bit, and I wanna get in a little bit closer to my lenses here. So now, what I wanna do is I wanna focus on the front Canon lens. Now that is the 90 mil, so let's just go here. We're gonna zoom in on this. So let's zoom in with our live view here. Okay, now I'll just move that with the cursor down here. Okay, so there we are. I'll just adjust my focus here so that's nice and sharp. I can zoom in one more time probably with that button. There we go, okay, so that's nice and sharp. Now, what I wanna do is zoom out, okay? And now, I'm gonna move this a little bit further down this way and this a little bit further. Hopefully they're in line. Maybe I'll do it a little bit like so. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna use the tilt. And I'm gonna zoom in again a bit here. Okay, so now let's go over to here, and you see that that second lens, the 45 mil, is completely out of focus. Now by tilting the lens, you're gonna see that I'm gonna possibly bring it into focus here. Now I wanna look here, I'm gonna bring that back in. Okay, now the 45's in focus. Let's zoom back over here. This is where live view is a godsend with these lenses. Now let's adjust our focus again, we'll get that. And I wanna look at sort of both these at the same time. So there's an interplay between the tilting and the focus. There's a lot of math involved in this, but you're never gonna to wanna to do that. So it's just a matter of playing with these two and getting it when you're right on the money here. So let's get there. Now we're getting closer, okay. So get there. Okay, look at that. So now you can see that I'm starting to get both cannons in focus here. Keep in mind, I'm wide open at 3.5 on this lens. So let's just get this here. There we go. Got the back one in. I gotta bring the front one in. It's a little bit tricky, but it's kind of fun playing with this. Once you get the hang of it, you can get pretty good. So what we're trying to, to do here is extend the plane of focus. Okay. So let me just take a quick look here. Okay, yeah, so I'm tilted in there. Let's go a little bit further here. I gotta move it in all the way here. There we go. Okay, now we're very close. If we zoom over, we can see that we probably even have the last one pretty sharp. This is where shooting tethered and uh, bringing the photos in a little bit. I might be just a little bit close on the first one here. Let's bring that in a little bit further over here. There we go. So now you can see we've got the 90 in focus, we've got the 45 in focus, and down here, We've got the 17 pretty close. Let's zoom in just a little bit more. I might just be able to fine tune this just a little bit more. There we go. 17, 45, and the 90's pretty close. The nearest lens is maybe 30 centimeters away from the camera, and the furthest is maybe 60 or 70 centimeters away, and we're at 3.5. So if we quickly go back to our regular setting here at no tilt, and you can see, if we go back to the back of the camera, there is no way we can have all those in focus. So now we've just got the 45 is in focus, but the, the 17 isn't. And of course, the 90 isn't. And if we adjust our focus ring, we see that there's quite a bit involved. If I zoom out a bit here, you can see there's the front one is in, then the middle one, and then the last one. It's not possible to have them all in focus. So what we've achieved here is we've bent the plane of focus. Normally a lens focuses on a plane just like this. We've bent it, we've taken it almost perpendicular to the camera. I mean, that's just crazy. It's so exciting to be able to do this. Uh, 
well, when I end the video, I'll let the slides run. You'll see that when you really do a massive bend of the plane of focus, the world can look like a miniature. And of course, because all of these cameras now shoot video and superb video, all of your tilt functions and of course your shifting functions are available to the video shooter. You can get extremely creative. Cinematographers dreamed of having this capability. It just didn't exist in their platforms. Now that we can shoot cinema with these Canon digital SLRs, we can play with all the different lenses. This is really adding some very unique tools to your toolkit. It's exciting stuff. So that's how we bend it to increase the depth of field along the path in a picture. We can draw the user through something. We can take a picture of a watch band and the face of it in macro photography for like a product website and the watch is on an angle, yet we can keep the whole band and the face of the watch all in focus. But the other area where it gets really creative is if we use the tilting function just to blur a picture. So if I bring this up a little bit, I'm actually going to change lenses right now. I'm just going to go put the 90 mil on, which is more of a portrait length. Possibly you shouldn't do this when you've got the camera in live view, so I just broke a cardinal rule there, but anyway, that's fine. And I'm going to hold it up by hand here. Let's get it in to, there we go, live view. So I'm just going to, I'm going to get a better exposure here. So let's take a look at, well, you know what I'll do? I'll take a look at our camera shelf here. So we're just gonna focus in on that camera. Now, I wanna bend it vertically, so I'm gonna rotate it so I can use the knob on the other side. You can rotate this thing 180 degrees. It's really fisting. And you just put your little finger in there and you get onto that little rotation wheel. Keep in mind, this is the previous generation 90, so I cannot do the independent rotate of the tilt and shift axes. They are 90 degrees apart. You have to physically take the thing apart with these little four screws here, jeweler screwdriver to do that. You can do it yourself, it's not a big deal. There's a little ribbon cable in there, you have to be careful. Anyway, I want to basically have my tilt on this axis, and what I want to show you is how I can do this. So, I want to focus in on the word Canon, but you see how everything below the frame is out of focus here. All that is nice and fuzzy, and we're at 2.8. So I'm gonna get my exposure up a little bit here. Now, if I do it in this direction, you can see how only the center of the camera there, I gotta hold it nice and steady here for Matt to video, but everything off to the side is out of focus. So it's quite interesting. I'll take a picture of Matt and then we'll look at it on the back of the screen here. So let me get out of live view so I can actually take a picture. And when you're using this, there we go, okay. So you see how I've got it at maximum tilt, I'm going to zoom in here. So I see how blurred he is on that side, but the plane of focus has gone from his eye and over to the poster behind him. So there's this wedge of focus. So that's actually readable on this side, but not on the other side. So I'm not about to say that that's a great portrait of Matt, but he is a good looking guy. However, you use this creatively, really interesting stuff. It's turned out to be quite popular with wedding photographers. And believe it or not, that's how I discovered the tilt shift lens. I always knew I wanted to play with one, but I met a wedding photographer who was shooting with them. So very exciting stuff. So let's uh, kind of wrap this up and I'll see if there have been any questions on Facebook for us. And if there's anybody in the uh, store here that has a question, doesn't look like anybody's actually paying attention to me, but that's all right. <laughs> has there been any comments on the Facebook at all there that we need to address? Nothing. Okay, well, that's all right. You can ask your questions later. I'm always here to answer them. Remember, these new tilt shift lenses from Canon are going to be exciting. They're going to be optically superb. I'm really looking forward to having a play with them. I want to use this 135 mil. I think it's going to be a very interesting lens for portraiture. As soon as we get them in, we're going to put them into the hire department here at Michael's so you can test them out. And again, like I said earlier in the broadcast, if you want to hire and purchase within 30 days, 50% of your hire will go towards the purchase price. So that's actually a nice little incentive. Give it a try. If you like it, you can uh, get a bit of a discount when you purchase. The existing 24 is in hire. We have the older 90 mil is available for hire. We'll probably sell it used after we get the new one in. So that might be something you want to look for. Optically, the old 90 mil, which I've got here, is a superb lens. A lot of product photographers have loved this for years. This has probably been in the line for 20 years or so. 
but it was a very good design. The 45, which is my personal lens, I'll probably continue to use it because I like it. It, uh, it has a few little quirks about it optically. It has some lens flare that I rather enjoy. I like to use it with um, you know, event photography and get some flashes in the picture and uh, cause lens flare. It just has this beautiful ability. Uh, the 24 mil, that's in higher. Uh, very popular for anybody who's been shooting um, interiors for houses for sale or some exteriors. And of course, the 17 mil with this big, beautiful hunk of glass coming out of the end of it, that's available as well. So if you're interested in tilt shift lenses, find me on Facebook, ask any questions that you want, and uh, we look forward to helping you out and getting you excited about tilt shift lenses. Thanks for joining us on this live Facebook broadcast. We love putting these videos on for you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at Michael's camera. Take care and have a great Friday evening. Bye-bye now.